Radical expressions. You know what we have done is multiplied, we've divided, but now we need to add and subtract some radicals together. So as I look at this first one, three root five X minus two root five X, well, guess what? The radicals are identical. So we can kind of treat them like a variable. Like we would know what three X minus two X is. So we can treat this one exactly like that. Three minus two is one. And then we just have that root five x along for the ride. So our answer here is root 5x. No problem. Let's try that again on this next one. 6x squared root 7 minus 4x root 5. Mm, darn it. My radicals aren't the same. So there's not much I can do here. There's nothing else to simplify. So this one, I mean, it just is what it is. So it doesn't simplify. So I'm just going to say it's simplified. Number three, I have 3x times root xy plus 2x times root xy. Woo, we have identical radicals, so we can just add like normal. 3x plus 2x is 5x, and then I have that root xy along for the ride. Doesn't simplify any further, so I'm done there. Take a minute to get number four done. Now, as I look at number five, I kind of see, okay, I have the cube root of 250 plus the cube root of 54 minus the cube root of 16. Well, none of my radicals are identical, so do I have to add them together? I could totally simplify these, so I need to go ahead and try to simplify, then maybe they will add together. Now, Mrs. Spirit taught me I could always start with the smallest radical because then that can kind of give me hints for the other ones. So the cube root of 16, well, I'm looking for cubes, right? So eight times two. Well, that means I know I'm looking for a cube root of two left, because if I'm gonna be able to add these together, they're gonna all need a cube root of two. Well, let's check that out. If I move to the cube root of 54, well, 27 times two, because that cube root of two um, is 54. So that's three cube root two. Ooh, I like this. Okay, well then what 250? What times two is 250? <gasps> 125, and that's a perfect cube. 125 times two, so then I can say five cube root of two. I like that strategy. Start with the smallest to kind of give me what root I'm looking for and then work from there. So now I have the cube root of two on all three of these so I can add them together. Five plus three is eight minus two is six cube root two. So go ahead and try that strategy on number six. Simplify first, start with the smallest. All right, so when I started with that smallest, that square root of 28, I knew that that was four times seven and four is a perfect square. So the square root of four is two. So I got two root seven. So that meant I was looking for sevens in the other one. When I looked at 175, I did, okay, seven times 25. And then I looked at 63 and did seven times nine. So simplified down, I have two root seven minus five root seven plus three root seven. Well, they all have that root seven, so I can just add like normal, two minus five is negative three. <gasps> plus three, well, that's zero root seven, so that's just zero. Now we get to multiply binomial radicals, yes! Four times five, 20. Four times four root two. So I'm gonna multiply the things outside the radicals and keep the stuff inside. So four times four is 16 times that root two. Next, I'll distribute two root two into the other binomial. 2 root 2 times 5, so 10 root 2. And then, careful here, because I have 2 root 2 times 4 root 2. Well, the things outside I can multiply together, so 2 times 4, 8. And then things inside I can multiply together. So square root of 2 times square root of 2, square root of 4, right? Now, I'm going to do this in a couple of steps, because we don't want to lose track of what's going on. You see that I did a side note to simplify that eight times square root four. So eight times square root four is eight times two or 16. Now we go ahead and combine like terms. Well, 20 plus 16 is 36, and then 16 root twos plus 10 root twos gives us a total of 26 root twos. Try number eight. negative 38 plus five root seven. Take a look at number nine. As 
as we multiply 9, look at what happens. The middle term adds out negative 6 root 12 plus 6 root 12. And the last term, negative root 144, well, that's square root of 144 is 12. So I just end up with 36 minus 12, which, of course, is 24. Ooh, I end up with just a nice real number value. Done. Hmm, look back at this problem. What did you notice? Let's see. The 6 and the 6 are the same. The square root 12 and the square root 12 are the same. So then what was different? The middle sign. Do you remember when we did complex numbers, we had complex conjugates? Well, these aren't complex conjugates, but they are conjugates, where all we do is we change that middle sign. And what ends up happening? We get rid of the radical. Let's take a look at number 10. What do you get? Well, this seems very useful, especially when we look at the next problem. I'm supposed to clear radicals out of the denominator, but this time it's not just like a radical. It's the difference of two radicals, or it could be the difference or sum of a number and a radical, right? We want to use a conjugate to get rid of them. So we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 plus the square root of 5. Just change the middle sign. In the numerator, I need to distribute that 2 root 7 into that sum that I just multiplied by. Be really careful as you do this. We get negative 2 in the denominator. Now, it looks to me like we have a lot of 2's going on, but we need to be very careful how we simplify this. So I'm always a fan of just separate, then simplify, or factor the 2 out of the numerator before you divide out, okay? There's too many times we make mistakes, so don't get sloppy here. Once I separated, then the 2's would divide out, and it happened to change my sign because I was dividing by a negative 2. So my final answer is negative root 21 plus root 35. 